Discover the exquisite beauty of Islam with our exclusive poster collection showcasing the 99 names of Allah. Each poster meticulously presents the Arabic name, pronunciation and English translation, embodying the essence of our Creator. Elevate your surroundings with these high-quality designs that not only serve as art, but also offer a glimpse into the profound beauty of Islamic culture. Immerse yourself in the collection and unveil the magnificence of the 99 names. Links in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, in the background, you can already see today's video topic. It is Jordan Peterson being interviewed by Russell Brand. And the question is, do you think God is real? Oh, I'm sure we're going to get a straightforward answer from Jordan. Do you believe in God? And I think, okay, there's a couple of mysteries in that question. What do you mean do? What do you mean you? What do you mean believe? And what do you mean God? Guys, before we jump into the video, as always, if you enjoy my work, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box to further support my work. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. People ask me questions like, you know, do you think God is real? And a question like that always pigs the question for me. It's like, well, what the hell do you mean real? Like, what <laughs> makes something real? And, you know, you could say tangibility. Uh. Um, although that's only one dimension of what makes something real. It's like, I think what makes things real in the final analysis is probably death. And in the- What? In the- This explanation is not religious, it's not biblical at all. How does death make something real? If anything, death shows you that everything that is created, every creature is finite. God, on the other hand, is not finite. God does not die. It says it in your own Bible as well, even though Christians nowadays, of course, believe that Jesus Christ is God and he died for your sins, but God does not die, yada, yada, yada. Anyways, within the Bible, you can find that God does not die. So therefore, God is the ever-living. He is the first cause to creation, and therefore, he is, of course, the ultimate reality. If you look into Islam, it is a much more coherent, much easier doctrine to understand because one of the 99 names of Allah is Al-Haq, which means the absolute reality, the absolute truth. So therefore, by that name, we do realize that God himself is the ultimate truth because he is eternal, because he never dies. Everything that is finite simply pops into existence and then vanishes away. It is temporary and not eternal. Therefore, it is just a subset of the absolute truth, the absolute reality. I would say it's comical to see his response, but at the same time, it is just so tragic because he doesn't understand the simplest attributes of God. Apparently, Christianity was not sufficient to teach him who God truly is. Now he really believes that death implies truth and you cannot find death within God. And in the, in the example you used of the silhouette, which is a very famous example with regard to birds, the silhouette traveling in one direction, that signifies death reliably, right? Over a very long span of evolutionary history. And any creature that didn't respond to that silhouette was at a much more at a much higher probability of being picked off. So then one of the things you might note, and this is where the postmodernists got things like dreadfully wrong and where the large language models have drifted into insanity. So imagine that there's a statistical relationship between concepts that's, okay, so then you might say, well, what gives that statistical relationship reality? And the postmodern types would say, well, it's just arbitrary cultural construction. But it's not because there are patterns of relationships between events that are part and parcel of the world per se. Okay. And some of and? those need to be accurately mapped by the conceptual system or He's you just die. talking for the sake of talking, man. And so I would say the like the 
the ideas that ring most true to us, that grip us in this sort of archetypal way, are ideas that bear directly on our survival, whether we recognize it or not. They strike yes, a chord within because us. because we are finite. I can, what here's a good example. We'll, we'll shift sideways for a minute. You already did shift sideways. Started to understand why. So I'm on a tour right now, We Who Wrestle With God, and it's focusing on biblical stories. I'm you trying definitely to explain. wrestle with God, man. I'm trying to understand what they mean and then talk about that so other people can understand insofar as I'm able to. Man, the question was, the do you think God is real, as in of the exists? Biblical library is the necessity of sacrifice, right? Wow. And so I've been trying to understand, first of all, what it, what it means to sacrifice. It, it means to give up something that's desirable yes. for something that's okay. more desirable. And it's something like that. It's, it's something higher And it's higher because it's it it's it extends over a long longer period of time, and it includes more people. I'm really trying. And so, like sacrifice is the basis here, of community. Keep my patience. Well, why? Well, it's obvious, Russell. As far as Give I can the tell, benefit it's of like adults, if you're in a communal relationship, I already know where this is going. Which is any relationship, Nowhere. obviously. Then you're giving something up that's immediate to you yes humans give up things they sacrifice the things in this life right? what does so that have to do with god sacrificial gesture and once you understand that once Christian you understand logic, that man. sacrifice is at the basis of community the question immediately arises which is well what's the most effective form of sacrifice and the the this biblical story old and new testament together is actually an examination of sacrifice per se It's an attempt to spiral down to the core of what constitutes, well, you might say the sacrifice Nobody that's maximally asked you effective. Nobody for Bible studies. Maximally He wants to know to God, if God but it, it's is something real. Like what sacrifice if is the by creator necessity at the core of community. Exists. I also don't think there's any difference between that and cortical maturation, by the way. I think they're identical concepts because as you mature from, you know, hedonistic, power-mad two-year-old, What happens is that you integrate modes of attention and action that facilitate your longer-term survival, but also your inclusion within more and more complex webs of social community. That's all sacrificial. Good God. Now, there's a lot of Jordan Peterson 101. Yeah, there's a lot of hits God. running okay, simultaneously. Wait. I genuinely do not understand how anybody is still following Jordan Peterson. And I'm not saying that to be mean here, but the point of the story is if you cannot answer a yes or no question with yes or no at all, ever, you cannot be trusted. The question is very, very simple. Hey, man, do you believe God is real? What does that imply? What is real? What is reality? Why don't you just dumb it down? If I ask you, do you think tigers are real? Will you give me a 30-minute lecture? No, of course not. You will say that tigers are real for all intents and purposes. For sake of the discussion, yes, tigers are real. We have to start somewhere, right? Is water real? Is water wet? Does it exist? Of course, we can go into obscurity and ultimately, oh, we don't even know if one plus one equals two. Who truly understands the universe? But that's not the question, man. We have to be pragmatic. We have to ask certain questions. And the question is, again, is God real? What does that mean? Is there a creator that created the universe? That's all. If you ask a scientist, the scientist will say that there was a Big Bang that created everything. So therefore, if you ask the scientist, hey man, is the Big Bang real? The scientist would say, yes, the Big Bang is real, just as evolution is real, etc., etc., you name it. So the question is so stupidly simple, so straightforward that everybody, a five-year-old, would understand it. Is there a creator to the universe? Yes or no? Does he exist? Is there indeed an ultimate existence prior to our existence, an existence that our existence is contingent upon. Is there such a thing, Jordan? 
That is the question. There's no question about sacrifice, about the dynamics of a culture, a structure, a society. Nobody asked you that. All we want to understand is, do you believe in the creator of the universe, man? Be here, JP, he because we've already it. touched on the idea of chaos and the necessary inevitable emergence of patterns within chaos. And it seems that you are positing to a degree that this ca chaos is analogous to perhaps the collective unconscious and some of the patterns that are emerging in AI models, even with the biases evident within them, are an indicator of how how these patterns emerge within a container. And I suppose to say a container is to indicate that we're acknowledging an absolute. We've moved from this idea of a collective unconscious and, um, um, uh, and patterns emerging within chaos into sacrifice, which is obviously another. You know what's really fascinating to me? Those Christians never quote their sources. They never go into their sources and explain from their sources then out on who God is, what his attributes are, etc., etc. Within Islam, it's very, very simple. You have the 99 names of Allah, you have the attributes of God, you know how to pray, you know how to fast. Everything is crystal clear, so there is not much space for interpretation. However, with those Christians, it's only interpretation. Every priest, every pastor that I ever listened to always gives you their own interpretation the way that they see it. Man, what is the use of your religion if you have to make it up yourself? Within chaos, Where's the guidance, into man? sacrifice, which is obviously another great Jordan Peterson theme, and as you say, perhaps the overarching great. theme of the Bible. My contribution yeah, to this incredible amount of information that you are relaying, <laughs> it has to do <laughs> with where smell all my one's <laughs> intention <laughs> carry oh, you, in so much as it seems that in this process of maturation and, uh, and, one, and a personal relationship with sacrifice, how that develops and evolves, it seems to me, is when one starts to acknowledge that there is not, when you use the phrase immediately beneficial, that when we're referring to immediacy, we are talking about both spatial and temporal immediacy. And we might have to consider that when dealing with the sublime, as surely the Bible is, that even these categories are called into question, the most basic and taken for granted categories of any temporal creature will have yes. to be challenged. He this perhaps helps me to understand sense. how yeah. the ultimate sacrifice as rendered in the New Testament, uh, and, 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 and most I suppose would regard as the defining Christian image, the, the image of sacrifice, can tackle the complex idea of the pact that is made by the sacrifice of the man god because i the man god I, as i as i explore Another and attempt to understand christianity more deeply the this the the nature of the triumvirate the father and the son and the holy spirit and the nature of this pact is something that i'm mulling over and i feel that the reason i can't reach resolution is because it's irresoluble because i i ask that when there is absolute dominion and omnipotence with whom might a pact be made and i'm starting to conclude that it must be a kind of cohen that you know that that all is coming from the same source okay. yes yeah 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 because otherwise well, how can there be a pact well i can tell you a story about that and you tell me what you think about it that's a very good question because the other the thing you're pointing okay. to too. Okay. Wow. Is, Big surprise. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Is God real or not? All right, guys. And this is it for today's video. Wow. 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 Absolutely surprising. We didn't see this one coming. We actually did not get an answer to the question: Is God real or not? As I said, man, during this video, how can you trust a person that cannot give you a simple yes or no answer? If we sit down on a table, let's say there is a Muslim, there is a Christian, there is a Jew, there is an atheist, and we want to have a discussion about God, we want to have a discussion about the nature of reality, etc., etc. Shouldn't we then first and foremost start with asking, do you believe in God? Yes or no? This guy will ask you then, what do you mean? And will go on a one hour rant about subjects that have nothing to do with the initial question. 
He's yapping on about the Bible, but nobody cares, man. The Bible is simply the book of the Christians. That doesn't tell us anything truly about the existence, about the nature, about the reality of God, if we don't accept this as source material. So therefore, especially in your case, Jordan, this is just a cultural book of mythos. That's basically what it boils down to. This is how you regard it because you can't even answer the simple question of what reality is. Nobody's asking of you to give us a full explanation of reality. We simply want to understand if within your worldview, you accept the premise that there is a real creator to the creation. We have to simplify certain terms in order to have a discussion. If we're asking ourselves if we're going to go out for dinner later on this day, then of course we have to establish first if there is a restaurant in town. If there is no restaurant in town, we cannot go out for dinner. So therefore, we're going to check on Google Maps and we're going to see, ah, there's one, two, three restaurants. Now let's choose one. However, in your worldview, you're going to ask the question, what is a restaurant? So at this point, you're not sounding sophisticated and intelligent anymore. You're sounding actually mentally disturbed because you cannot answer the simplest questions. Again, we're not trying to extract some sort of mythical information from you that we cannot get otherwise. No, we simply want to understand your premise. We simply want to understand if you, Jordan, as a human being, believe in the creator of the universe. And as I said, the Christians never go into their own sources. I mean, if you ask yourself the question, who is God, and you are identified as a Christian, why wouldn't you look into your creed? In Islam, the creed would be the Akida. Why don't you look into your creed? There you have the explanation of God. Is your source material not sufficient? Are you more intelligent than God? Why don't you look into the Nicene Creed? Let's read this. A Christian is supposed to believe this. The Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. This alone here already would describe your position, or at least it would describe what you should believe in. You should believe in one God who is the maker of heaven and earth. That's the question. Do you believe in this, Jordan? Yes or no? Of all things visible and invisible. Now it becomes confusing, of course, because we are, after all, in Christianity here. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became men. For our sake he was crucified, under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, etc., etc., you name it. So as you can see, when the text goes on, it becomes more and more confusing, and somehow you can then understand why Jordan Peterson's mind is so scattered, because it starts with pure monotheism, and then scatters into the Holy Spirit, and the Son, the true God from the true God, etc., etc., you name it. It becomes very, very confusing, and this is why now, after reading this, you surely understand why many Christians actually do not cite their sources. They rather come up with their own opinions, even though this is their source material. If we look into Islam, on the other hand, it is so much simpler. This is al aqida al tahawiya by Imam al tahawi and here we read under monotheism, we say about the oneness of Allah, believing in the guidance of Allah, that Allah is one without any partner. Absolutely clear, there is only one God. There is nothing like him, there is nothing that can weaken him, there is nothing worthy of worship but him. He is the eternal without a beginning and enduring without end. He will never perish nor come to an end. Nothing happens except what he wills. No imagination can fully conceive of him, no understanding can fully comprehend him. He does not resemble any created being. He is living and he never dies. Jordan, he never dies. Death is not absolute for him. It's not an attribute. You die, I die, 
God never dies, always sustaining and never sleeping. He creates without a need to create and he provides for his creation without any effort. He causes death with no fear of consequences and he resurrects without any difficulty. He has existed with his timeless attributes before his creation, which added nothing to his essence that was not already among his attributes. As his attributes were before creation, so will they continue forever. It is not because he created the creation that he earned the name the creator, nor by his making it did he earn the name the maker, etc., etc. Absolutely rational, absolutely straightforward. And this is why Islam actually clarifies your thought process. Because imagine you have to deal with the Trinity on a daily basis. This is why he writes books and gives tours about wrestling with God. We wrestle with God. Yes, this is a Christian theme. You will always wrestle with God because you don't understand who God is. You don't even understand if he's real or not. In Islam, it is crystal clear. Allah is one. He is the creator, the maker of all things. And his existence is what we are contingent upon. He is indeed the necessary being. Without him, there would be no creation in the first place. And yes, Jordan, we believe him to be real. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, leave it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the links in the description box to further support my work. And as always, may God, yes, the real God that we believe in, bless you all. Much love and peace. يا نفس إن لم تظفري لا تجزعي آه